All right, so here we are, July 4th. Ah, I see the uh, cottontail in the background there. Uh, so July 4th in the uh, Peterson Community Garden at the Garden Hive or my Yellow Hive. This was my very first hive. Uh, so what I'm doing today, uh, I'm going to compile one video of several inspections. I'm going to, a couple days ago, I visited all of my hives in uh, the Trails End Apiary out near Cameron. And today I'm going to be visiting all of the hives that I have in the Hutto area. Now, when I was last here, I did notice a bit of a, a small hive beetle infestation and that is ongoing um, I also I took a small queenless colony um, of uh, from a cutout and put them in here on this side I opened up the the ridge here with the hope that they would move in to the other side and they do seem to have done so so the bees uh, the frames that I had given those bees are now available for use in other hives this one or or others we'll see what I need to do there um, and that opens up this space I'm going to remove a little bit of burr comb from the floor here smash a few hive beetles as I do all right I am not going to be able to kill nearly enough that way so I'm going to give up that effort for now I'm going to put down some Swiffer sheets. Um, some of you might have heard that those little replacement mop heads for Swiffer mops, they're so fibrous that, um, boy, I just can't help it when I see the hive beetles. i got to crush them even though I know there's too many for that to be a really effective way of dealing with things. All right, I'm going to get this chunk of comb up off the bottom. Oops. Do that much more forcefully than I intended. All right. So we'll keep that wax for later reclamation. All right. So now I'm going to get the Swiffer sheets. Now what I do, I've heard some people say not to use these mainly from the perspective of a Langstroth hive um, because if a queen gets down there they can catch queens and and bees as well um, but what I'm going to do is get the bees out of the corners and then put these sheets in the corners in the empty side of the hive where the queen bee will absolutely not be likely to go under almost any circumstances that I can think of because she stays for the most part on the brood comb and when not on the brood comb then um, then at least in the brood chamber so here's an example this little bee is caught I'm going to try to free her shake her loose that got it So what happens is these little frothy fabric sheets will entrap the beetle's legs. They get stuck there and then die. And they do like to find the corners of the hive because they hide there. Alright, I think I'm just going to put two. I'm not going to put them in the main body of the hive because the bees will chase them back to this section as they get the opportunity. All right, so now we're ready for the inspection. Woo, we've got population. I'm not used to seeing that much population immediately on a, uh, on a divider board. I uh, hope you can see that. I think you can. All right, so the other thing I need to do I like to keep my frames numbered and I've moved them around so much lately. I'm in the time of the year where it should be uh, should be more stable now. So this is going to be one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so we've got 10 frames with three more available here. We'll see if we're going to use them. Uh, on the inspections today, I am, I think, going to uh, try to find queens. And if I find queens that aren't marked, I'm going to try to mark queens. So we may have that little adventure ahead of us. Let's just take a look at what we've got. Here is a nice frame. You can see it's got the dowel in the middle. Um, they're using one side of it for honey. Actually, they're using both sides for honey, uh, although there is a little brood down at the bottom. That kind of surprises me this far out in the brood nest. Uh, and it looks like that's drone brood, just a small patch of it. Uh, lots of nectar there. It's Not a lot of it is capped. All right, so we'll just move this over a little bit. All right, that was 10. All right, continue to get opportunities to smash hive beetles. What fun. <coughs> ah. Frame nine. Also has a dowel in it. Brood across the bottom. nectar across the top and it sure looks to me like that frame has sagged somewhat in the heat because the uh, the cells seem to go down at a more extreme angle than I'm used to seeing so probably 50% capped honey not quite 50% on this side uh, quarter uh, lots of uncapped nectar and quite a bit of brood in the bottom. Um, with these cells, as you saw in the last video, if you watched it, uh, I'm sorry, these frames, goodness. When I'm talking while I'm working, my terminology tends to just go bonkers. All right, so with those, those frames, with the dowel halfway down, it makes it nice if you're, if you're limited to crush and strain because you can... Um, you can harvest half a frame rather than the full frame if needed. Uh, I'm not in a harvest mindset though uh, today. What I'm gonna gonna leave these probably all the hives now. I'm gonna leave them all the food they they have. Get them through the summer dearth, um, and then revisit the question in the fall. Um, All right, this is frame eight. All right, and again, the top half is honey. Bottom half is being used predominantly for brood. A little bit of it's being backfilled, but not too much. The queen would have plenty of space to lay. You know, on that previous frame, I did not even... I've got to remember, when I see brood, I've got to let that remind me that the queen might be on this frame. I'm used to finding her further over here towards the entrance. But she could be out this far because she has been out this far. Without going back to check my records, I do not remember if this queen is marked or not. It's interesting, now that I'm using these uh, foundationless frames, 
the pattern that I see the bees using is completely different. Of course, it could be, I suppose it's partly the weather too, that we had a really good spring for honey uh, where we are. I know not everyone did. Um, but uh, last year, on a, a frame with brood on it, I would only see at most maybe three inches of honey above the brood. And here, uh, they're using typically about half the frame for honey reserves. Which is really, I think, says interesting things about uh, overwintering for them. Maybe they'll, they'll certainly have plenty of reserves, I think. All right, this one, the entire, virtually the entire top is capped honey on one side and looks like it's getting close to all being capped on the other. Lots of brood on the bottom. Those pesky little hive beetles are trying to find every crevice they can, which I guess is what they do. Uh, these girls are being quite docile. I haven't felt like any of them are out to sting me yet. So that's frame seven. Frame six. Well, I hope those hope those swiffers help to control these hive beetles. I've heard other people talk about treatments you can put on the ground because the hive beetle life cycle involves them going to the soil uh, to lay and then they come back. Now I've got a hive beetle climbing on my suit. Can't do any harm to me. But... Okay, so once again we've got honey and nectar on the top. We've got eggs and larvae on the bottom. I do see some very recently laid eggs and larvae, so I'm looking carefully for the queen here. It's not going to be a comprehensive search, just a careful look. It's not like I have to find her because of some operation I'm performing on the hive. I just would like to make sure that she's marked for future reference. Okay, I don't see the queen there. Now in this case, I am going to just continue. I'm going to look at every frame, I think. Um, Just so I don't miss any problem conditions that may be arising. Here comes frame five. Sorry, the beetles preoccupy me. All right. So we've got a pretty reliable pattern here that they are using the top for honey, bottom for brood. Got some good pollen reserves on this one. I've been let down. Got quite a lot of uh, pollen reserves. That's uh, this is increasingly close to what I would consider the the core of the brood nest. Typically, they've got that pollen close by the babies who need it. 
Population seems so strong, um, and their activity seems strong. They've laid up some really nice amounts of uh, resources. They're laying lots of brood and lots of honey. It's just spread across all these different frames. propolis we can use for other things. Alright, frame four. From a distance I see some brood um, oh, uh, grown brood. That seems most of the brood on this frame. Makes me wonder if they're thinking in the direction of swarming. Swarming is not the only time that they'll lay drones, but it is often associated with swarming. This honey seems older, better dried but it's still mixed with uh, with brood on the on the comb. Queen's not jumping out at me here, so and that's four. All right, I think I'm going to give them a little more smoke. Move too fast in front of the opening here. Ah, here we go. There is a chrysalis for a um, wax moth. Not a chrysalis, but a cocoon. A cocoon for a wax moth. We'll crush her, or it, or him, or get rid of another hive beetle. All right, here we go. I thought as I was scraping the the propolis that is between the uh, between the frames that some of it looked like it might have been used by wax moths. The hive beetles and the wax moths are both pretty pervasive pests. You're unlikely to get rid of them completely or to never ever see them. But uh, as a general rule, if your colony is strong, they won't be a problem. Now you can't say that absolutely uh, because I know there have been cases where in unusual circumstances, each of those can bring down a colony that was thought by the beekeeper to be strong. As a general rule, they'll They'll keep up with things unless they have too much space for the population in the hive. All right, so right now, this side has the typical two or three inches of honey at the top, and then lots of brood below. So that's the pattern I was seeing all last year. So I think they just had so much uh, nectar to harvest this spring that they laid more of it aside. Oh, now here we've got an interesting little knot of bees here. I almost put it down without noticing. Um, just need to kind of see what this is. It's just a little burr comb that they built between frames. They're storing honey in it. I'm 
I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. And now down on the bottom they'll get to the task of reclaiming all of that. Just had to make sure that wasn't a, a swarm cell. Down to the last two frames, and then we can. Uh, they're getting more touchy when we get to these last couple of them. There is another wax moth larvae now dead. Scrape all that stuff out. This one, it's a typical part of the brood nest. There's lots of uh, pollen on it. A little bit, a uh, little bit of nectar at the top, and most of the frame is brood. Some of it milk brood that is still soaked in the. Uh, the jelly that they feed the babies. All right. Same thing on the other side. Mostly, uh, mostly brood. Some young brood. A little honey at the top. So I think that the reason we ended up with uh, brood all over the bottoms of virtually all 10 of these frames, I think there might have been one that didn't have brood there. I think the reason that it happened that way is that they were backfilling these frames nearer the entrance when the flow was so strong. And so they... Uh, the queen found other places to lay further from where she would typically lay. But it looks to me as though now they're not backfilling these front ones quite so much. And um, so hopefully they're going to get this back to a more normal pattern with these frames at this end being mostly or entirely filled with honey and the ones nearest the entrance being mostly or entirely filled with brood. Now the very first one is typically uh, resource heavy and that's true here. Uh, tons of pollen and bee bread and some some capped honey here as well. And then on this side a uh, little patch of drone brood and then lots of pollen and bee bread. All right didn't see the queen, don't see the queen. I'm uh, not going to worry about it because she's clearly there. And I've confirmed they have, they have the room they need to lay. But I'm not sure about having the room that I'd really like them to have for the population size. Because um, these, they're, they're packed in here really good. So, I'm going to put this back together. Let me take a look at our fuel le level here. Oh, okay, we're still good. It was, the smoke was tapering off. I wanted to make sure I wasn't running out of fuel and burning it too hot, but I think it's alright. 
So now we'll try to get them out of the crevices between the frames. All right. I think that stupid hive beetle is in my beard now. They don't like those critters. All right, there we go. Oh, I think I'm going to leave them. Maybe just one more frame for now. Comb growth uh, is really slowing down with the, uh, the nectar flow slowing down. So they'll build up sl more slowly. There should be some circus music playing with as I try to smash these uh, hive beetles. Da, 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 da. All right, well, that should be all. The hive beetle problem, it's the largest I've seen here. But as long as this colony stays strong, uh, I feel confident that they will uh, they'll be able to manage it. Uh, and I'll help them out with the Swiffer sheets each time I inspect. All right, well, on to the next hive.